Today's adventure begins here on the corner of US 192, well, Highway 192 as the locals refer to it as. Be going around the filming locations of the 2017 film, The Florida Project. Now this will be shot out of sequence, not completely in order, but I am starting here before meeting up with a few guests at this arrow that turns. This is where some promo photographs were taken of mother and daughter right here with the hotel in the background. I'm going to be heading to Orlando first and then after Orlando everything else will be in this general vicinity. Welcome everyone out of the woo here. I'm here with my friend Natalie from California who, how many times would you say you've seen the movie? At least a dozen times. A dozen, a dozen times. It's not, it's not a movie that is for everyone. It is you either, either love it or you don't like it. It is, it's, it's hard to describe, but for me, it holds a special place in my heart because Highway 192 is kind of how I began a lot of filming a lot of these former attractions and hotels back at the beginning of my YouTube career. So, and I understand the realism of the movie based on you know the context and the plot because a lot of the motels along here are just like that that are shown in the film. Starting at this arrow that turns that way where a couple photographs were taken and like I said the hotel off in the distance. All right let's just go to Orlando and then we'll head back over to 192 in Kissimmee where I would say 95 percent of the film took place. I'm inviting you to join me and Natalie and others that we'll meet up throughout the course of the night. Shall you? There's that arrow along the ground. The interesting thing about this is they, they created a movie poster and they photoshopped in Orange World as well as the rockets from the hotel in the distance. It's a little photoshop, but this is the, uh, this is the original as is this one where they're putting a little, little nose to nose, a little mother and daughter right over there. All right, moving on. About a 25 minute commute, about 18 miles, give or take, corner of Colonial and Kirkman is Mr. Quick's restaurant, which would have been next to Orange World right on 192. However, in reality, not next to Orange World. You know, almost a half hour drive, give or take. And what kind of tipped me off to this spot that it's in Orlando is for a brief moment, you can see on screen where this sign up here that says Mr. Quick Restaurant is shown. And Ashley would have opened the door right here to let them know that she had some food for them. And also the interior scenes were in here inside of the booth as well. And around the back is where the door is. Around the back was where the door is where she is giving them the food. And it, it, we both thought this was in Kissimmee, and after a little research, realized, no, it's in Orlando, so we should walk around the back and see, see how it looks. And if you notice up here, this all looks the same. And I kind of did think there was a possibility that the front was here, and then around the back was a different location. But that's not the case. And the door over there is, is still open. So this is the door right here. The same little, little, little grates down here, the little holes down here. It's almost like we're witnessing the movie in real time, right? It really is. I wonder if they'll give us free food. A couple, they, a couple of different scenes took place here. Earlier in the film when everyone was friendly and then later when she had an issue with her friend and didn't want to give them food anymore. And also if you, if you watch closely, you'll see this little button here. That is very prominently seen as well. It's the same door. The thing that's really fascinating too is they removed the sign up here that says Colonial Drive and put Erlo Bronson across it, which is another name for Highway 192 in Kissimmee. So, a little fun fact, if you look very closely, if you have a, you know, like a Blu-ray edition, it says, instead of saying Colonial, it will say Erlo Bronson, but the reality, it is Mr. Quick Restaurant. Who knew? Who knew? All the way up here in Orlando. For a little perspective, this is where I was originally standing a moment ago. Same awning, and you can see where it says 
Mr. Quick right up there as they run around the back, as well as a far away angle of them running. You can see the little arrow there. I'll kind of match this up as well to this. Now just need to step inside and see if the booth and everything is identical as well. My guess it, it probably is still the same. It's only been four years. But things do change quickly. We'll go in there and see. Also looks as if that trash can is still the same one as she had the door open there. And the address there, 5615. So the cook just told us that he was here when they filmed it. And here, the booth over there. Yeah, right over there. That's the booth that they were sitting in. There's someone eating at it, so I'm not going to show it. But... Pretty, hey, yeah, it also looks the same in here. There's... Pretty cool. There's the, the Coke machine still over there. See it? And the coffee Yeah, that's the coffee shop. And that sign says, spring is here. I'm so happy I wet my pants. <laughs> Made it back over into Kissimmee now. About a you know, 20 minute commute, give or take. Pulling into Calypso Bay. Looks okay. She was stopped by a security there in the golf cart that was right across from Runaway Beach Club. You can see right over there the, the golf cart was parked right about in this section here. And this is not only the area where they were selling the perfume, but also where they went in to get the free continental breakfast. And you'll notice these three very small palm trees. This is where Mooney was saying she was building the sandcastle where her mom's standing here with the the bag of perfume, trying to find anyone that could sell the perfume right here in this spot where the sidewalk and palm trees are. Yeah, even the little breakfast room is considerably different. It's all been you know, completely remodeled. The only thing really left are some of the poles there that kind of match up. Just a couple miles away, corner of Hiawatha and Bronson Highway, which is, you know, Erlo Bronson Highway 192. A lot of different names still here in Kissimmee. There are two spots. One was an abandoned building that sat right here that they walked past en route to the condos that they eventually set fire to. And adjacent to that was the Twisty Treat, which was an ice cream stand that was right here between these, these two poles, these two lights. This is where they were asking other people visiting the establishment for some money so they could get some ice cream. Sat right along here. I believe the picnic table is probably right over there, right? Yeah, I think so. Right in here is where the picnic table was. Of course, the employee at some point, they kept frequenting this place, kind of told them to get lost. Hey, you're, 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 you're bothering the customers. And they said, we are, we are paying customers. Yeah. And weren't they sitting like right down here, they like were. on the curb, <laughs> like, right, in, right in this section? Yeah. You can still see kind of the, the shape of an ice cream cone here. Twisty treat. And there are still twisty treats on 192. They've just moved them to other spots. But this is this is the one from the Florida Project, as well as the uh, the abandoned building here, or the signage that was here that they walked past. The interesting thing is when they walked past this abandoned building to get to the condos, which you would think would be continuing down this road. In reality, they're about another mile or so that way. Movie magic. Just to give a little perspective of what it looked like when the ice cream stand was still there. See, there's that slab of concrete there, as well as the tables on either side. Used to be a medical clinic with the signage there all dilapidated, but notice the building over to the far end. That still remains, which can be seen right here. Now the same formation. And you can kind of see this road as well. And the same. And then, just like magic, they're down that way, about another mile. Right past Seven Dwarfs Lane, which that sign coming the other direction could be seen a couple times. The direction they were walking is toward the Sam's Club, 
Seven Dwarfs Lane, next symbol with the lights and the palm tree. At two different times, walking that direction and then turning around and heading back down this very sidewalk, which runs parallel to South Beach. 4786 is the address. You can see it's all fenced off. This closed off section has been repainted and used to extend a little bit farther down that way. There was about five or six, seven more buildings that were very colorful that were really set on fire for the film. They really did burn the dilapidated facades. I think there's one more building down here at the end that still kind of remains. See if it's still down there. Now this building where this icon iconic image was taken is gone, but you see the palm trees and all that still there. Right over there, in fact, that dock along the water as well. So they extended from down there in that section past here. All of these buildings went all the way along, stretched along 192. Now, when the congregation of people were standing kind of excited about the fact that there was a fire, you'll see over there in the distance is one little shed. That shed still remains. So they were all kind of in that little vicinity over there. And in correlation, in you know, realistically speaking, the Magic Castle, when Willem Dafoe walks out of the offices and notice, notices the smoke in the air up here, the Magic Castle's down there about another mile or so. And it, they really did have it on fire. So the smoke was real right through here and what was the what was the line that Gloria said about she made well in a roundabout way what did she say about these about these buildings they were so ugly even she was thinking of burning them down and how fun is the fact that the copter is going by here outside of the magic castle painted purple pretty dang cool This is the office here where a lot of the interiors took place. I'm going to go ahead and just walk over and introduce you. This is Chris Bergash, hey, co writer and co producer, or full writer, co producer? Uh, co writer, full producer, but there okay. are many producers on it. Wonderful producers. Right. Lexa Ching Sao, who uh, sells them the fragrances in the movie, the wholesale fragrance seller. Yeah. So she made a cameo. Excellent. But here's where the movie opens. They're hanging out. Now here's the fun thing. We tried to, I tried to infuse uh, as many sort of references and sort of in jokes for Disney uh, fans. And that's sort of like their purple wall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the purple wall, gotcha. Yeah. So when the movie opens and, uh, and Mooney and Scooty are hanging out there, yeah. Uh, and we have the character of this kid, Dicky, comes running up and he's like, Freshies at the future! Freshies at the future! And no one knows what does that mean. But Future Land was our made up Just name down the road. for Paradise uh, Inn, which we should go to. Which all the, the rockets are gone. The rockets are They've gone. They've removed the rockets. There was like three or four scenes that took place here. Yes. And they were, you know, a lot shorter than I, realizing this is tiny. Yeah. Underneath there. Yeah. Now, also, how did, it, how did it work with the helicopter? So it was basically like, hey, helicopter's going, say this, get underneath here, and just do the, do the scene, right, kind of like right. impromptu? They're constantly going up and down, and we couldn't shut them down. And every once in a while, you know, one of our crew members or producers would go there and say, like, can you just wait five minutes to take off? Till we get set? No way. No way. They got a business to run. We understood that. So it's one of those happy accidents where, you know, you just work it into the script. We, we, we didn't write that when we conceived it, but... Sean is a genius because he used the sounds of the helicopters to his advantage at the end. So if you watch the film, he's slowly manipulating the sound of the copters when the drama is rising at the end with when DC right. shows up and he's making it a little louder to increase. And they run out this way yeah. over to Magic Kingdom. I'm also real this is this is where the, the birds were yeah, right with here. the foe right in here. Right here. Oh and there's a bird look at there's a bird right over here. No harm, no foul. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm also noticing, I went by the condos and stated it was in real time because you really set them on fire. However, he's looking this way 
The condos are not that way. Yes. I'm wrong. The condos are this way. You are on it. So was that like a CGI? Uh, yeah, it was a CGI. Yeah, that was a comp. It's a smoke. Yes. So I, good. Wow, you're a master. <laughs> You've got uh, like, you're like Neo at the end of the Matrix seeing. Everything inside the office pretty much looks the same, more or less. At first I thought there's even a Florida Project poster over there. I thought those were the same chairs where they were eating the ice cream, but the chairs have have been replaced. And this telephone, I think, was could be seen a couple times That's as well. There. And then the two chairs, of course, over there is where they're eating the ice cream. Eating the ice cream. And it uh, falls on the floor <laughs> in that scene. They cut into the trailer to open that up. So does this bring a lot of memories being back here? Yeah, it's weird to be back here after this, this much time. Uh, First time you've been back? Uh, I was back one other time because on my Instagram, when Willem was nominated uh, for an Oscar again after the Florida Project, I brought his uh, Volco action figure from Aquaman, and I next to the pool pictures of Volco in the same <laughs> position that uh, he was in. The movie starts off here with uh, sort of a tracking shot of um, Aiden, the actor Aiden, playing Dicky, sort of running up to Mooney and Scooby hanging out over there. Freshies of the future. So yeah, that was the opening. I'm glad you brought the Freshies of the future because I didn't I didn't catch the future correlation to yeah, you we mentioned that. Yeah, trying to sort of just, that was their code for future land and that meant just that new people were checking in for them to terrorize. And then of course they go and spit on the car. Yeah. And yeah, we, we didn't, you know, we- Which we, isn't right next door. It's in a totally exactly, different spot. Yeah, yeah. Normally in our films, uh, uh, Sean and I try to get it geographically accurate. So if people were to actually go there, for example, in Tangerine, it's pretty much, except for one little cheat, you could basically walk the path of Cindy and Alexandra in okay. that movie. So with this one we had to cheat because there's obviously certain locations that we wanted to work in. You know, uh, the Orange World. Definitely. The Wizard Hotel. There were actually a list I made of about 20 and we had to comb through it and like, okay, we can't use all of these and narrow it down to the to the ones that you see in the movie. Yeah. The water looks deeper. The water looks deeper than yeah. it did then? Yeah. So they removed the wooden bridge that was right here. Oh. I think you're just like a little tiny piece of wood. But you can see them walking across where the, yeah. the copters are. Yeah. Did you guys do any copter rides while you were here? I did one. You um, did one? As a matter of fact, a couple of the ones that you see, we actually did that by me going in a copter and just sort of Getting we the were telling them that they were on camera. And we just sort of went over there and sort of, I said, can you just pass by the hotel, try to time it out to get it just right. Facts that are spot on and then some facts that are like wrong. Well, that's the internet. Yeah. You're gonna, some stuff's gonna be true and some stuff's just gonna be. Oh, see that building over there? That storage building is new-ish, and when we filmed, uh, that was just a long, vacant lot where we had our lunches every day. Oh. And we had the tent set up there. That was Craft Services. Craft Services was right where the storage is. So if you... So you didn't get any bread from the, the truck that was right in front of this thing? So this was Willem Dafoe, well, his character's oh, yes, apartment, right. which was, uh, right. one, was it 101? 101. Yes. I think it was 101. Mm -hmm. There's only one scene where he walks over here and goes in. And then the next scene, the next morning, he kicks out the people around the back. You got it. I think and, uh, around the back. We wrote a scene, we never shot it in his room. We just wanted to get, get across the idea that, you know, he lived here and he was a lonely guy and he yeah. inherited this job that when he, when he took this job, I don't think the character of Bobby realized he was gonna become sort of a father figure, a surrogate father figure to all these people. It just kinda happened to him and we wanted to show him more of his life in there. We're about to go in room 323. Now room 232, which is, or 223, two, two, oh, three, yeah. was directly below 323, yeah, which was Ashley's room, yeah. which would be down one, kind of near the end. I think it's like the second or third door from the end. So we're gonna walk down there and they've been gracious enough to give us the key to go in. As another goes, oh, this is going the other direction. Here, same air conditioner unit. You would have the orange bird right here. Yes. This is where she slides the door, window open, the goes in, bird. and opens the door. Three, two, three. It says no smoking, but there was some smoking going yes, on yes. by the characters in this movie. Yes, not, not the best tenant. <laughs> oh. All right. This is the room. <laughs> this is probably the first time you've been in this room since then, though, right? Five years ago. Yeah, we shot in the summer of '16. There's a couple different rooms too. There was the one down below where she beat up her friend in between the, the beds. But a lot of a lot of stuff took place right in here. I can't believe that it's uh, not made up for the new. That's interesting. Huh? They said they haven't cleaned the room yet today. I, just wanted to, I wish that they like 
made it into like a Florida project themed roof. That'd be so I mean, <laughs> that would be really cool. Or like the tapestry and like the clothes. Yeah, our clothes over and there. And everything. Yeah, why not? <laughs> this is when she ran in from upstairs. She ran up the stairs, ran over here to the restroom. Yeah, on the wall. Yeah. And she wasn't feeling too well right here. This is this is wild looking at it from this angle. Like this is the this is the angle right here. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't I mean I can't say how impressed I am with how you know this stuff. This is I amazing. even know how you did it with her running in. Well, yeah, the, running so, in. Uh -huh. And then she kind of regurgitates there into the into the toilet. Right. And then the camera pans back over. Yep. She refills the prop in her mouth. Yep. <laughs> And then spits out. Yeah, just just swigs a glass of the, the stuff. And, right. And then yeah. It's see, I've watched all the all the behind the scenes stuff. So, then did you see me in a haunted mansion? A deleted scene where you were driving. Yes. And that car is still in there, but it's just like it's you're edited out. I picked them up when they're hitchhiking. Right. You're the cast There's, member. Or like yeah, yeah. I was just I, and I wanted to because hitchhiking ghosts, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, there's a little nod there to that. Um, yeah, it was watch. originally going to be Josh Shusman in that role. So, for a number of reasons with budget, Josh wasn't able to come in from L.A. Uh, and uh, then I was just going to do it because we had the, we were lucky enough to have the, uh, the outfit. And, uh, and then just for time and pacing. You're, you know, you're on the just, cutting? Just cut to the chase. You're on the cutting just room get him, get him to the, uh, Get him to the fireworks as quick as we can. I wish I brought my swimsuit. I could take some selfies right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could take some swimsuit picture. selfies right here. Let's remove the pictures first. Is I just want to. Yeah, the pictures were right up here. She took the pictures down. Is there any rent? Yeah, this is where we took her baths. <laughs> yeah. So you actually use this tub? Yeah. For all those scenes. With oh yeah. The, with the rap station in Orlando playing. Yeah. Wow. That's the tub. That's the one. And that's another thing is like with with certain people, you know, you, you have to give the audience a lot of credit because normally a lot of people that would watch that movie would just be like, why are we watching this little girl in the bath so much? And then hopefully you get it. Yeah, like but she's like on. thinking about the point and then all of a sudden it's just her in the, yeah. Yeah, she's just being put oh, in there's, there. There's a, there's a famous shot there she's of doing Willem Dafoe. What's the line about the disgrace? Yeah, mom, you're a disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> You disgrace me! And there's a little the perspective there, 323. Three. As the copter goes by. Oh, yeah! What do they call that when you, you, not, you don't ask for something or pay for it, but it just happens? And it's ad artistic something added in for free? Oh! There's a term. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But... Nonetheless, that just happened. I was just saying, every, you're okay. every uh, day, member would sort of wonder what the title was going to be because it was called the Florida Project. It was always called the Florida Project based on what was. Right. Walt and Roy showing up doing the do it over at Lake Eola right. doing the press conference right. they called the Florida Project. And uh, Walt Disney World. Yeah and this sort of had a double meaning because obviously the projects have another meaning and this was sort of like the projects uh, in that movie for those characters and uh, yeah I just tried to explain it and they said no 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 but seriously it's, it's just a working title. So Eventually, I guess they, when the movie came out, they realized that was the title. I, I got it from day one. I actually thought it was going to be specifically a Disney movie. Oh, yeah. And then I watched it and I was like, oh, this is some cool 192 stuff. But you weren't disappointed. No, no, no. I like it. Yeah. Mostly because I grew up, you know, filming up and down 192. So for me, it's like a lot of like landmarks yeah. that I know and love. So like, That's why The Orange World, I, I joke that I was location scouting the movie since I was four. The first time I came here from New Jersey because we always visited the Orange World whenever we came. And, and back then, they actually sold the authentic Orange Bird merchandise there. They had like Orange nice. Bird little miniatures. And, yeah. Oh, I love the Orange Bird. Which you put right over here in this very window. Yeah, that's why you can't make... I wanted to say one quote, but we'll do it in another shot. Oh, I'm still recording. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just showing where the Orange Bird was. I wish you opened the window up. You can't make a movie called The Florida Project and not put the Orange Bird in. Yeah. You'd be a jerk. That's the, that's the Florida icon. <laughs> There are some marks over on that wall. Hmm. Over on that one, you see some kind of scuff marks and stuff. But here's like the. They got yeah, pretty cool. So we those pictures were not there. And different does headboards. It look like the same, yeah, different headboards. Different headboards. Oh, you know what? That actually might be the same chest of drawers. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. Over there. Probably same mini fridge. Yeah, I think the fridge was here in the movie. I don't know if the was there. So cool they let us in here. I just want to stomp on the floor like she did. I don't want to disturb the neighbors, but 
It's pretty solid though. Let me take a picture. This is where they were moving the appliance into the into the elevator. It was here on number three. It was with these with the sun, right? Mm -hmm. And they were kind of going. What if the elevator works? Andrew Jones came on board at the last minute two weeks before the time. That scene was written while we were shooting. There you go. This this is the one that he pushes. Because his son tells him, yeah. you got to push the button. Yeah. And he's then he goes. You realize because he's dwelling. He's, so, he's supposed to be like sort of dwelling on the fight with his son. That's why he's not even thinking Actually, about you're standing right in the same spot as son was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to push the button. <laughs> <laughs> it's moving very slow. I thought, okay, there he goes. Hey, at least it still works. Yeah, that's the room. Is this the laundry? This is the laundry. But they're not supposed to go in. Let's go in anyway. <laughs> oh, this is the laundry right here. This is this looks the same. Now, where's the room where they flip the switch? That's probably the next oh room my over. Oh God! Wait, Adam. Those are all-star comforters, oh my gosh. right? Or no? Am I wrong? Aren't those the all-star? Oh yeah, there's the there's Mickey right That's there. That's the all-star. <laughs> oh sure are. Those are all-star <laughs> movies. <laughs> I believe. Yeah, because they got the Mighty Ducks. Yeah, look at that. Dalmatians. <laughs> oh, look at this. Here's a little Toy Story, one of the aliens yeah. looking for the claw. Yeah. We need, some paper. we need to find some paper towels. They're looking for paper towels in here. Isn't that what they were looking for? Paper towels? Yes, exactly. Oh, you're right there. There's paper towels. <laughs> There's the paper towels. <laughs> we can go clean off a windshield from all the spit. Looking this way. Now, there really is a security camera there now. Yeah. But he just used his cell phone to get the security footage. Oh, yeah, exactly. And then around here, this is at the very end when Willem walks out here, and I think he's smoking a cigarette because he knows what's happening at the very end of the movie, and you can yeah. see these behind. This still kind of looks the same. This is where the, the leaf blower, we had the leaf blower out here oh, yeah. the in the morning. And, uh, I think there was like maybe five or six of these at the time, though. And of course, oh, you're yeah, right. They've done something. And also, of course, where they throw the bed bug mattress away. Yeah. They've added these doors. These doors weren't here. See, that's amazing. I didn't even realize that. That's, you, that you, you were at one with the Florida Project. That's nice that someone listened to me and actually walked their bike up back here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Remember? There he is walking around with the mattress. There were four. There were four appliances here. Now there's only two. You were mentioning something about you were going to use Splendid China, which I did a video there years and years before they bulldozed it. When it was all still just kind of rotting away. Rotting away. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. So when we were writing the script, one of my earliest visions of the whole movie was a whole sequence in there where Mooney would take Jancy, just like she takes her, you know, arms to the uh, safari, uh, whole sequence in Spotted China where they're talking about like all the places they want to visit in the world. And the idea was that, okay, you know, again, they don't need to go to the theme parks. They had their own theme park because the Great Wall was still standing yeah. after all that time. And they were sort of talking about different pl exotic places they wanted to visit to as they're like pretending they're giants on the Great Wall. It would have been amazing. And then, just as we were shooting, Jimmy Buffett ruined everything. He, he moved <laughs> in. Now there's a water slide there. Did yeah, you movie. film the, the movie came out in 17. Did you film it in 16? Yeah, summer of 16. Copter. I just love it. It feels like I'm in the movie. Yeah. It's like the last action hero. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the movie. He's still alive. <laughs> this man's not dead. Right in here is where they flip the switch right in there, just to point out because you can really tell behind him there is the is where the door was closed. So it can't get in there, but that's where that's where that room was. Oh, uh, the woman trips right there. Oh, that's the stairs she trips on? Yeah, and it was a planned trip. We had the padding down there. Oh, she was planned. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, good to see that he got this painted, though. Oh, uh, Remember? Yes, he got he it felt the, the paint dropped right here. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I felt so bad for the uh, the PAs who had to clean, clean all that up. Because it was real paint, you know? There are watches of, of the paint left. Yeah. I wonder if just the, the, wear, the wear could be from where they had to scrape it. Scrape it all down. Now, the soda machine has been removed. It was right over... In this section here, really the only way to, to just, the way you can figure that out is right over here is that little pipe. And the guy's name, you said there was a Disney reference with that as well? Right, that character, uh, that mysterious man is called Charlie Coachman, based on the coachman in Pinocchio. And they were overlooking from that right over there towards the pool. So we're racing against time. One of them starts disappearing. All right, set the camera up. Just just go, just do whatever. Talk about leprechauns. I, what, one of the things I love about working with Sean Baker is being on set. You know, a lot of writers aren't lucky enough to be on set. So you can just throw out ideas. And uh, 
that's how that happened. We got we got it before the last one disappeared. Yeah. Where you are spot I do yeah, remember it, that. <laughs> room two five two is where they were taking the the mattress out with the bed bugs. That was right up there in that corner. You should see the stairwell. Also just one floor down, one five one. This is the room that he kicks the tenants out of right here. And the woman kind of argues and then he states that her husband kind of knows what's going on. So that scene took place right here in 151. Also wanted to show an angle of the pool there where he had just finished cleaning the pool and just kind of put the, the, little, the little netting back over there to the corner. Now they're not the same picnic tables, but there are picnic tables here and the grill where they are sitting and looking at the copter as it flies off. It just adds so much ambiance having that copter over and over and over. And another room was 111 where they couldn't stay more than a month at a time. They have to move out. This is part of the rules. You have to move out for one day. So 111, which is right here, was the room that had to go in. So put their stuff in there, opened the door, tossed all the luggage in, and just one day had to, to move out for one day before moving back in. That was here back then too? Yeah, then, huh? yeah, yeah. We used it a lot to sort of figure things out. It'd be pretty neat to own one of these right here. Oh, Magic. Yes. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be amazing. Don't yeah. drip the ice cream. Yeah, Don't like, drip the ice cream. Like this. Yeah. He was the, the angle was like kind of down yeah. like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't do it. Just waiting for it to happen. Don't do it. It's and gonna then, melt outside. <laughs> you could maybe do that. And then here, there was a there was a kind of a scene here where she kind of stuck something against this window right here. Oh yes, she this did. window. It probably, <laughs> this has probably been washed off since. Probably. Probably. Most likely. Most Sean, likely. Sean Baker true story that happened uh, in his life. He saw that happen at his old. I think. Believe so he just worked it in. He worked it in. Yeah. It's kind of amazing how quiet it is without the copter going by. It is like kind of going out for a long route. Also asked the gentleman at the counter if people ever stop by, you know, for the filming location. He says yes every single day. Here's where Gloria was. No, I'm not sure if it was the same seats or not. Do you know if it's the same chairs? What? You think you know if it's the same chairs? Could be. But she was like right here. Yeah, I think they were white actually. It might be different chairs. Yeah, I think they were white chairs. But here's the pool. Also another scene where the two friends when they still got along near the beginning of the film, we're right here having a little party from this angle. And they had all their they had all their beers and stuff right there. Yeah, playing their music. And their rooms would be up there on that uh, top corner, second and third floor. And there's one before heading out of this this spot, we're gonna go up and recreate the Willem Dafoe smoking a cigarette in that corner. And in that scene, it was nighttime, all the lights turned on. Chris was also saying he was here for every single frame when they were filming throughout you know, the course of, of every day. So he was here for everything you see in the movie he was on site for. Pretty neat. Walking back by 223. Ashley's room with Scooty. We're not getting in this one, but this is where the confrontation took place. Right here. That's uh, Josh actually did remain in the movie, Josh Sussman of Wizards of Waverly Place, Glee fame, was supposed to be the, the you know, as we said, the, the hitchhiking picker-upper. But if you listen on the TV, and Josh is on that track, it's oh. including me and a bunch of our okay. friends from I'll, I'll have to re-listen to it. Very interesting. Yes. Right here in 223. Oh, it's coming by. Here it goes. Right there. This would be the Defoe angle right here with the cigarette. Uh, yep. Kind of like go, this? Yep. Yeah, right so you're there. just like leaning over this? Leaning over here, kind of hovering. So it was like, okay, when he leans over, turn all the lights on, and then all the lights sporadically came on. Yeah. A lot of people have actually been so awesome, and they come here to take pictures, and they recreate the shots, you know, and it's amazing, and, um, Sorry, we're being looked at. So, so a lot of people are, have been so amazing and they've been coming here posting pics on Instagram, recreating the shots. It's amazing. If you do that, thank you so much. And just make sure you either tag me at Chris Bergosh on Instagram or Twitter or tag Magic Castle as your location so I could find you. Because I want to edit you in montages and, and it's just it's amazing. And thank you for your support of the movie. Hey, we're going to recreate the run across the road. <laughs> All right. We're like recreating. Yes. Whoa, going across to the second hotel which was not called the Sun Inn and Suites, had a, had a different name. 
we're gonna go oh we got it it's actually got looked out pretty pretty well going across here and the fountain yeah the fountain is still here and I believe it said registration across the the wall the registration font has been removed but this is where she went and tried to get a room and they would not grant her access right is that how it worked yeah exactly uh and uh yeah, we called it arabian nights i believe in the movie no magic castle discount no magic castle discount here you have to wonder if the people working here even know should we ask should we go in and see if they even know that it was filmed in here like magic castle it's obvious yeah. oh, these are the same chairs these are the same chairs these are the same chairs yeah. I was kind of thinking if, if these chairs were the same chairs, but they're Is not the same either? chairs. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they're not. I'm surprised that you don't. Uh... They're not the same chairs. Well, I don't watch a lot of movies. Oh, okay. Uh... But the TV's the same, though. The TV over in the corner. That's where she was dancing. <laughs> And I'm Chris, and so in the movie, there's a scene where we have this mom and her daughter, and they stay at the Magic Castle, but they have to check out and come here, but they won't give them a room here because they don't like them. So she has a temper tantrum, like right here, and her daughter is sitting there watching the TV dancing. Notice his Haley keeps the money in that scene. <laughs> she takes it. She doesn't give it back. I love to see when they both look at the counter and they're right back. Yes. And the gift shop across the way there, Disney Gifts, where it's pretty neat just to see that Willem Dafoe did that, well, I guess you could call it a stunt on his own. He crossed over the lanes of traffic to run in here. And just to give a little more perspective too, this is, this is the angle here where they are walking straight in, just to, just to kind of give the idea. Next up, Orange World, which is next to this Waffle House. See, it's confusing because you allude to the Waffle House being next door, oh, yeah. when in reality, it was up earlier today, we went up to Orlando off Colonial Drive. That's where the diner was. Yep, it's a little trick because uh, unfortunately the good people at Waffle House, even though we love them, they wouldn't let us uh, shoot in there. But you wanted to use that so one. In, in theory, that's what it's supposed to be in the reality of the film. But the interior is, as you know, where you found. Good detective skills. Yeah, I figured it out. I could have asked you, but I wanted to do it's it before. Amazing. I can't believe you figured it out. <laughs> I mean, that's incredible. Thank you. I don't even remember where it is. <laughs> I'll take you there sometime. <laughs> we'll have a full breakfast. And hey, of course, actually, it was good food. Did you, you guys ate there? Oh, yeah, I ate there. Yeah. The casting crew? Yep. Of course, the most, one of the most iconic moments from the film happened right over here, underneath the, there you go. the fresh fruit pick daily. Again, it was just one of those things that we knew we needed. I, I like I said, I, I had these locations. By the way, look at this place, Travel Lodge Suites. When I was four years old, my first trip to Disney World from New Jersey stayed right there. So you had the orange world so on your mind. this has been in my mind since four years old. And uh, we came here every time, you know, then after that we stayed at the Contemporary when I was eight. But we would always come to visit the orange world. It became a tradition. And back then, you guys, that all, all you new generation of Orange Bird fans, the old school Orange Bird that's sold in places like this. Uh, you get the little Orange Bird figures here. So good. That was at the Welcome Centers when you crossed the state line as yeah. well. Yeah. And this is where they were sitting and she bumped her head up against the side here. They were both sitting right here. Yeah. And then they get up and they go over here and you think it's the back of the Waffle House, but yeah. no, no, no. It's in Colonial Drive, 20 miles away yeah. in Orlando. It's the magic of movies. Hollywood magic. The magic of Sean Baker's editing. That wasn't in the script. He calls it a bracelet. And I think that was his own, uh, you know, take. Maybe just Bobby would call it a bracelet. For I think the magic a, bands? Yeah, it was a really good idea for him. Because Bobby wouldn't know what a magic band yeah, is, Yeah, that's right? true. So it was great that he called it a bracelet. And this is the timeshare place you guys used. Yep. Cheap tickets. Now, did you film inside when he's when uh, she's oh, yeah, talking to did. the woman? We did, yeah. It's that, inside here. That woman was great. Um, Super awesome. There's also a promo shot that was taken around the side over on this side over here. Yeah. Probably in between in between scenes. Exactly. Right, right up against here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that's, that's the, the angle there. And this is where they sold the British gentleman his magic bands. Right here. 
And then you said they were your magic bands. They were, they were my magic bands. <laughs> you brought them in as props. I saved everything, so I had to just go through. By the way, that's I have like so many Disney treasures from years past, all thanks to my mom, who's nice enough to let my sister, they let me keep it all in the garage. So I had to search through all my old plastic bins to find them. That's great. That's pretty neat, they're your magic bands. Do you still have them? Yeah. You have some screen use props. Screen use props <laughs> from the Florida Project. Well, that does make sense. You're, hey, you're saying that she's very sad because she wanted to go to the park. She doesn't want, didn't want her mom to sell those magic bands. Mm -hmm. And in that same spot too, there's also this one was taken. And nowhere near the diner is where she took the food and kind of kicked it to the curb there. Right next to the wizard. You guys use this a lot. Yeah. So, uh, and then there's another wizard down there that people two mistake, wizards mistakenly visit. The wizard on the closer to Highway 27 has a lot more creepy eyes. So they are walking, walking across near the beginning. They have painted his magician's cap purple. Not too far away is Future Land Inn. The rockets, the rockets are gone. Now here's the deal, here's the deal with the rockets. You know, those were here and uh, we changed it to Future Land Inn because the idea was if Magic Castle was where Mooney lived, representing the Magic Kingdom, Future Land represented Epcot. And okay. Then, and then we, we actually had a third hotel a motel that got cut out of the movie that we wanted to have like it was gonna be called Hollywood Hotel to represent the studio you know, formerly MGM Stu Disney MGM Studios yeah interesting Hollywood Studios. you get the idea so but you found that you you chose this spot because of the former rockets exactly, that used to be here exactly and this hotel at least in my little deranged Disney brain represented at people thought it represented maybe you know uh, Tomorrowland, but I can see Tomorrowland too. But it's, it's yeah, it's more, it's more, it's the Epcot to Mooney's Magic Kingdom. Very, cool. and you make it seem as if it's right next door. Oh yeah. When it's really about two miles from dis from distance wise. Yeah, that's one of our little cheats in geography. And it's right across the street from Medieval Times. There was a whole scene there too that got cut. We didn't, we really? never shot it, but if you were in the original script, they went on a little adventure by the Medieval, Medieval Times. Times. Yeah. Looking for room 116. Yeah, they had the door open. I don't want to disturb the residents, but... Now, whose room was this? So this was, if you give me one second... This was Jancy's room, right? Yeah, Jancy. So her, where her mom was? Grandma. Grandma. Grandma, <laughs> that's right, Grandma. So they used two different sides. They used this side for one room, and then the other side, which you could see Medieval Times from, is one of the other rooms. So Medieval Times is over there. It's called Paradise Inn now. Jancy's room, 116, and look, we have live Jancy herself, oh, Valeria Kodo. <laughs> Hi, Valeria. How's it going? We're back at the Paradise Inn, yeah. aka Future Land. This is Adam. How's it going? Hello, how are you? Excellent. We're doing the filming locations today. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. I wanted to surprise, I wanted to surprise you guys. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> Once we oh got my gosh, here. you're so talented. Now this is not this is not the spit. This is an oil oil slick, right? We can yeah. pretend that's a lot of spit. We can pretend. They were spitting off of the balcony, which was up top. So 116 up directly above. It's 219. They were right up there, spitting down on the vehicle. And look, there's some cigarettes down here where they were out here smoking. Yeah. And I, I have to say this: whoever took uh, Valeria's room over is actually really cool. Look at that stuff. Yeah, they have like an owl that's in the awesome. window. They just need an orange bird. Yeah, they they just need an orange bird, in, or orange bird in there. So that's where Mooney had her famous crying breakdown. Oh, that's right here. That, see that door? And then she ran off. What? Here. You're going to recreate it? <laughs> go, go. Go to Magic Kingdom. That was a great, that was a great scene. <laughs> yeah, that's where we switch from 35 millimeter film to iPhone 6S Plus. It's up on the top corner roof up there. That's where... What was the character that was uh, living up there that they ended up moving out? Uh, Dick. And then they would have had... He was like giving away all his toys. Dad was giving yeah, all his so toys right here. To there. Right up in 206. 
You know, we're not too far from the tree either. The tree is like in the yeah. same neighborhood. Right. We should go by the tree. Let's go. And end it at the tree. Cool. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be really cool to go see it again. Yeah. The last time that I was here on this ground was July 2nd, 2016. And that was before they moved Pioneer Village, which is over there. Pioneer Village was not here at that time, which is this little kind of old town section over here. It was across the road behind the Super Walmart, oh, wow. behind Medieval Times. They, they moved, moved it over it here. here. They moved it over here a few years ago. Oh. It might have been here then, but it yeah, was... I don't, I don't even remember. It hasn't been here very long. I don't think so. Don't quote me on that, but it was. it's only been there a few years. And this is the tree. This was day three, day three of production. So everybody's still getting to know each other, so it's a real credit uh, to Valeria and Brooklyn that they could have that kind of camaraderie just on the third day of shooting, you know? They really seemed like they were friends. Yeah. This is it. At least I'm assuming this is the yeah. tree. Yeah, no, this is the tree, all right. It's just, yeah, it, what threw me off was the Pioneer Village. That's what, because that was all, that was just nothing. Wow. I think the camera angle was from over this way. Uh huh. So the camera would have been set up in these shrubs and they were just kind of perched right there. Yeah. Eating their jelly sandwiches, right? Yep. Which was taken right out of the Little Rascals. Oh. Yeah, Sean's a big Little Rascals fan and uh, and that the, even the dialogue uh, was pretty much identical to an, a certain episode where they have jelly sandwiches. This total Little Ra Rascals reference from Sean. That's so neat. They were sitting right up here. They had harnesses on that you couldn't see or that they were digitally removed or just hidden in case they fell. They were like chained to the tree. Yeah, that's pretty high up. They couldn't fall, yeah. Oh, you can see, look up here, there's there's some little concrete and some some screws mm. up there. That might have been it. The you hidden, think so? The hidden harness. The hidden harness? Oh, wow. Yeah. This is pretty wild. Actually, I would have to step back about maybe 30, 40 feet to get this angle, which I'm not going to do because because you never know what kind of bugs, insects, and or snakes could be over in there. But it was it was this is what. There it is right there. If only I brought some bread and some jelly. <laughs> I've never been up here. Oh, is this going to be a thing I regret? How did you get up there so easily? Because I can tell like, there's a set formation. Um, should Would I just stay like here? To I'm just going to record this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not you're so close. You're almost there. Okay. okay. Here, put it, there you go. You little foothold there. I'm a backseat driver here. I just like to tell you exactly <laughs> how to get up there without actually a doing it myself. tree climber. <laughs> you got this. Uh, then I'm going to be stuck like that. There's nothing to grab onto. Oh, that's, that's, that's it. Can this go on the special features? Have you ever put out another Blu ray? Oh my god, yeah. I did it. South Korea with There you go. All right. Nice. Welcome to the tree. We made it. Oh, can I give you this? I wish I was like Spidey and I could just jump. Jump, please. I can come over and help you. you want to like brace yeah. yourself on my shoulder. Maybe I'll do that, Adam. Okay. Like I'm still not going to stop filming that. You have a braceable shoulder. There you go. Brace yourself here. Yeah, I got to grab onto something. There you go, my shoulder. There's like a lack of things to grab yeah, over right here. Right there, grab that. There you go. Okay. There you go. And just slide down. There you go. Got it? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Nailed thank you. it. We're coming along, everybody, and thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Thanks for thanks for all the info. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and end my video here because this is a beautiful this is a beautiful moment here with the sun starting to set over the tree. Thanks to Chris for all the info. Bye everybody. Yeah. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. There's a bunny over there. Do you remember the movie? <laughs> remember the Florida Project? <laughs> the squirrel doesn't remember, Chris. Oh, I'm not the squirrel totally does not remember. Sorry.